Have you ever noticed that squaring numbers near 50 is surprisingly easy to do in your head? If I asked you to do 50 squared, you'd probably say, all right then, I'll ignore two zeros, do five times five, which is 25, then stick two zeros back on to give 2,500. But what if I asked you to do 54 squared or 45 squared? Look a bit more, ugh. Well, it doesn't have to. First, we ask how far away the number is from 50. It's four more than 50, so we add four to 25. That's 29. Then we square the four to give 16. 54 squared is 29, 16. Let's try 45 squared. How far is it from 50? Well, it's five less than 50, so we subtract five from 25 to give 20. Then we square the five to give 25. 45 squared is 20, 25. Now, this is a slight adaptation to the technique I shared recently for squaring numbers near 100. To do 96 squared, for example, we worked out how far away it was from 100. In this case, it's four. So we did 96 minus four to give 92. Then we squared the four to give 16. But for squaring numbers near 50, we make two changes to that technique. First, we're asking how far the number is from 50. Then we're adding that to, or subtracting that from, 25. Other than that, same, same, including the fact that we need a four digit answer. Now, if you're wondering why we use 25 or why this works at all, I'll pop an explanation in the caption. So if we've got 49 squared, first we ask how far from 50? Well, it's one less. So we subtract one from 25 to give 24. That's the first part of our answer. But for the second part of our answer, squaring one gives us one. But since we need a four digit answer, we write zero one. 49 squared is 2401. Let's see that again. 52 squared, how far from 50? Well, it's two more, so we add two to 25 to give 27. Then we square two to give four, but since we need two more digits, we write zero four, 27, zero four. But isn't this madness having different techniques for different multiplications? Shouldn't we just have one technique that always works and stick to it? Excellent question. You're very wise for asking. Well, no, not really. Walking is an excellent mode of transport, but you probably wouldn't want to walk 2,000 miles for your summer holiday. If we only have one technique for multiplication, we'll often find ourselves using an inefficient process, not to mention missing out on an exploration of the many wonders that maths has to offer and the opportunity to feel really slick in a mental math situation. Now, I'm not saying we want to present this method to a seven-year-old on their first day at multiplication camp. Not a real thing totally should be. But our best chance at understanding a topic is to look a little deeper, explore a range of methods until we find the ones that work best for us and best for the situation. Here's one for you to try, 53 squared. Drop your answer in the comments and let me know if you found this mathematic technique helpful.